Wherever you find a stream meeting in an ocean, there you will find an estuary. In coastal cities such as Vancouver, there are dozens of rivers, small and large, that drain into the ocean. And each of them contains their own estuary. Or, at least, they did. To humans, estuaries provide flood mitigation, carbon sinks, natural education, green spaces, and recreational areas. Estuaries are an important ecological zone, a meeting place for species who rely on saltwater habitats and freshwater habitats. Or some, like salmon, who dwell in both. Today, we'll focus on what has happened to McKay Creek and McKay Estuary, what happened to them over the last 100 years, and how we're making progress on repairing the damages done to them. At the turn of the 20th century, McKay was used like many creeks on the North Shore as grounds for industry. Today, much still remains the same. All the biological diversity of those creeks and estuaries squeezed into a tight spot between industry and forgotten. McKay has lost 90% of its estuary over the past century. Logging has removed all of the old trees that used to grow along the creek. Invasive species then took over most of the stream banks, increasing erosion and reducing room for native plants and the local animals that depended on these plants. Chemical runoff from the street remains unfiltered and a constant source of pollutants. Oil spills from industry or construction are a common occurrence even to this day. And even the beavers have taken to damming the creek at various points, which does cause issues with water flow and fish passage. In 2012, plans were put together to manage these stressors, eating away at McKay Creek and McKay Estuary. In 2013, work began on the estuary. The first major obstacle here being a weir blocking fish and salmon passage. No business, agency, or group had ever claimed responsibility for setting it up in the first place. With heavy machinery, the weir was removed. Tree stumps and boulders were added in to reduce the water speed, slow erosion, and act as anchor points for sea grasses and to give cover to passing fish. Invasive species were then removed and replanted with native species, such as salmonberry, thimbleberry, red flowering currant, maple trees, Douglas fir, and many more. Many of these changes are best visible from a bike path added during the course of the project. 2015 to 2016, work moved to the other side of the rail lines. This area was completely overtaken by climbing invasive plants like clematis, blackberry, and ivy. Many trees have been toppled from the sheer weight alone, a danger to wildlife and humans alike. The invasives were removed painstakingly by hand. Bark mulch was blown onto the site to add nutrients and to help suppress the invasives from coming back up. BCIT students, some who would one day join and work for Echo Ecological, helped to plant native species crops on site. Five years later, and many of these plants are thriving and bearing fruit. to 2017. Restoration efforts jumped north across a First Avenue to begin tackling the creek proper. Once again, invasive species were growing out of every corner. Of special concern was Japanese knotweed, growing close to the road and overpass, which is considered a structural hazard for these. Additionally, beavers had also taken down several large trees in the area for dams upstream. 
containers full of invasives had to be removed from the stream sides, and once again native plants were brought in. Volunteers also helped in the construction of bird boxes to encourage native species like chickadees and swallows to return. Twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen. Heading north up the creek adjacent to a local tennis center, the project pushed on. Invasives were not as intense here, but mats of ivy still covered the ground everywhere. Beavers had also taken to damming several sections of the creek, again blocking fish passage. And once again, the invasives were removed and native plants and bird boxes were added into the site. Volunteer days from the community becoming more frequent along the way. Twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen. The pond was a feature adjacent to McKay Creek but connected beneath the roadways. Unlike the moving creek, the pond has still water, with slightly different plant compositions and slightly different issues to deal with. Blackberry, ivy, clematis, and other invasive species from the other sites carried over here as well, and were dealt with in similar fashion. Hand pulling them and replanting with native species, either by our crews or the help of volunteers. And once again, BCIT students helped out, although this time, former BCIT students from before were now part of the working crews, teaching fellow students to do what they've been doing for the past few years. However, an invasive plant particular to this site was yellow flag iris, an aquatic invasive and very well established. This needed something bigger. Using swamp pads, an excavator operator moved around the pond, digging up the deep, heavy iris roots out of the ground, placing them on the high ground to dry them out, or burying them away from the water. He also placed several logs from the pond upright to act as stumps for woodpeckers and other birds that might make homes out of them. The edges of the pond were covered in recycled burlap coffee bags, and native willows were staked into the ground through the bags, and grasses were planted around the banks of the pond. And once again, the results speak for themselves. Seven years ago, we started work on McKay Creek and McKay Estuary, and have already seen massive changes to the ecosystem. Native animals have been returning to McKay. Native plants we placed are thriving, and the invasives have been suppressed. But our work isn't done yet. Go visit McKay sometime, and please visit our website for more information down in the video description. Thank you to all the companies, local governments, groups, and volunteers who helped make this project possible. And thank you for watching.